Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for tuning in to join us for one of our talks today. Today, we're incredibly fortunate to be joined by Logan Miller, currently starring in the movie Escape Room Tournament of Champions. And I was really interested in the opportunity that you had to take Ben as a character and to bring him back for a sequel, because this is the first time as an actor that you've shot a sequel to a franchise. Um, and it's it, it must be such an interesting exercise because you get the opportunity to have inhabited them, to know how they respond to certain situations and at the same time you're also bridging a significant amount of time in between as well and thinking about what's the life that he's created for himself since so right. i was very interested in how you worked to really bridge the gap between the two movies in terms of your character work and development coming into shooting this yeah um you know i upon making the first one uh you know ben's uh behavior was very cynical um he had almost kind of given up on life due to the circumstances that he was placed in and uh you know now that he's been through this hell and back that was the escape room situation he's gotten a second chance at life you know he's gotten um this opportunity to really take a hold of um himself and he does that, I think, in in the best way that he can with uh, with with Zoe, trying to um, be there for her at every step of the way to try to find this evil corporation, the ins and outs of it, and get that revenge that they uh, they want. And so it it was great that he kind of took more of a heroic role in this one, which uh, was a, a lot more fun for me as far as like creating the evolution of it. Um, and the the first movie and the second movie, um, as far as time frame, you know, I, there was a year in between of us making it, but like the trajectory of the story kind of happens back to back, you know, um, at the end of the first movie, we're kind of picking right up where we left off um in the second one and so you know where we see them at the very end uh he is kind of ready to take that heroic position and he does so i think uh in the best way that he can given the circumstances with the second one and when you were all filming the scene where they all start to realize that they've been trapped into an escape room, how did you set about determining when you wanted him to gradually realize and the way in which you wanted him to realize and also what his emotional response was to realizing that he's been trapped in this situation again? Yeah, well, um, you know, they were trying to be very meticulous in um, making sure that Minos wouldn't catch them off guard um, and so, you know, they were trying to plan this out as best as possible. He was also trying to um, heed to Zoe's emotional trauma of like, we're, we're not going to get on the plane. We're going to drive there. We're going to make sure that we're going to do it in any way that is safe and comfortable, but well thought out. And, uh, you know, they catch us off our guard when a random man steals a piece of Zoe's jewelry and then we're taken through a chase through the New York City subway, which you think that would just be a normal situation. We get there and of course we're, we're frustrated, but we don't think that Minos is taking over the entire city itself, but it turns out they got us right where we wanted. And um, that realization that now just the public transit is being controlled by Minos um is flabbergasting almost and then we quickly learn that everybody there also knows about the situation so it's really kind of um a, a mind bender that you're not even allowed to uh you're not even allowed to realize what's going on you're not even allowed to like cope with the emotion yet of we've been trapped again it's like all right now it's do or die yet again. So we just jump right in and the thrill ride continues. Yeah. And I wanted to talk about working with um, Adam Robital, who's the director of the film um, and the collaboration and the way in which that evolved because he's also from the sounds of it, incredibly meticulous in the way that he really maps out a lot of the details from everything. And it sounds like he's got very meticulous storyboards and has a really clear idea of where the camera is going to be and where the cast are going to be. Um, and so I was interested in hearing a little bit about how that fits into the way that you work on scenes together, as well as a lot of the choreography and the blocking of the scenes. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, the first one was a bit of like an experiment with this. And I don't think we really knew how to do it um, the completely the right way until it was done. Right. So, um, you know, and then then when we were able to, like, make everything into like a playbook, um, that was really helpful. And so, you know, having that past experience and I, I think to the benefit of getting Adam to sign on to the second one was so nice because we had all experienced this before, at least the, you know, creative side and stuff, um, myself and Taylor Russell. So we knew going into it, what that playbook would look like. And so uh, even though it, we were kind of running and gunning, I mean, we didn't even have the full fledged out script uh, until we arrived into South Africa to shoot it. But, um, you know, it, I, we had picked up right where we left off again, where it was like, Okay, so we know what the circumstance is. We got to be here, here, here. I mean, uh, he, he was like a football coach almost in a way where it was just like we knew the plays, we had to run them. And again, we're going <clears> to <throat> get coverage like we're covering a cake with frosting. You know, it's just like all around, we're getting every little minute detail so that, you know, in these edits, we can make it the the beautiful thing that it tends to be and the the thrill ride that we we've created and you mentioned there that you didn't have the final version of the script even when you arrived to film it which usually i think would be a little bit of a hindrance in figuring out certain character arc details but for this was it actually you know totally fine because you're working with a character who is learning all of the information as they go so you're not necessarily building up to certain things in the same way or was it something where there were certain details that you wanted adam to be able to share with you yeah i mean at first when i was told like we're not going to have the the full script until we get there i was like maybe a bit annoyed but then once we got there and i read it i was like okay so i'm feeling the energy of what I would feel as the character of getting thrown into this. And um, I don't know if that necessarily was um, a choice that they had made. I think we were also just kind of running under the pressure of like getting this all together um, because, you know, these sets are so immensely detailed and they had everything structured out, but they were trying to find the best inner workings of, where the characters go within this magical world. So um, it was great getting the script and then having like two weeks beforehand to like kind of run through it with a fine tooth comb and be like, all right, so what's working for this character and what's not? And, you know, going back to what you were saying about the evolution of where I was on the first one to the second one, um, that's what I wanted to do with the script. I, I saw what they had done with Ben and I was like, okay, let me put my input in of like where he's going on this heroic journey. And, you know, it was met with amazing collaborative conversations. And even though these movies are so detailed and it's all so like almost set in stone, thankfully we were able to mold the characters in a much more like enhanced way. And obviously there's so many scenes in the movie where character wise, Ben's moving around the room, reading for information, trying to figure out a lot of the clues. And do you always have a strong sense when you're going into shooting the scenes of what information does he know? What has he figured out? What are the clues he's still trying to understand? Or do you play around a little bit and think, okay, maybe he's not gonna notice this right away, but if he notices at this point in the scene, it'll be a more interesting beat and kind of dance around with those rhythms a little bit. Yeah, I mean, thankfully, so each room was about like a two week shooting process. Um, and then like the weekend or like the week before we were about to get into the next rooms, we get to kind of have that exploration where it's our sandbox in a way. And we'll figure out what to look at specifically to not make sure that we're giving something away too soon or, um, you know, if, 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 if something's coming at us very quickly, we know how to react to it. Um, so I, I really appreciated that situation of getting to jump in and do things in a natural way, uh, rather than it just being there on the, on, on the page, which is nice. I, it, it 
yeah, it, I think it made the things all the more natural in exploring the rooms to make sure that, you know, we keep that element of suspense and mystery while also, uh, you know, continuing to keep the story going. And I love that you just use the phrase sandbox because in the movie you are also yeah, in a literal, literal sandbox. sandbox. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about that scene because I think what you all managed to do and the way that that scene comes together is is really kind of incredibly detailed in the way that it flows. And, and I, you know, you're working with practical effects in that as well. And when the quicksand is, is sucking your character in, that's you actually going down into the sand. Um, yeah. And so I was just very interested in the logistics of how a lot of the stunt work and the action work came together in those scenes. Never did I think that I was going to be in a bubbling cauldron of sand and then falling into it. You know, it was like, and like, you know, we really now know how to mess with the elements in a way because to see them take these like hydrogen tanks or something to make the sand a little bit more liquefied to then turn it into a quicksand experience was just like, so enthralling and weird to see um fun and fantastic uh very smelly and itchy at the same time we were using some like strange recycled sand that smelled like uh the inside of a dirty fishbowl so you know uh the torture element was there in scent as well um but uh it was yeah it was interesting it's great because, again, like we had the first we had the same stunt crew that we had on the first one. So they also knew what to expect and what we were going to get into. Um, and they're just so good at their jobs and they have so much fun doing it. I mean, in the past, they had worked on like Mad Max Fury Road and stuff. And so they really know how to, you know, get inside the inner workings of uh, a hellish battle and they're willing to take it all to the next level. And so, yeah, the, the stunt training was, was very intense. It was at least like three weeks before we were starting and then a continued process throughout. Um, yeah. And I was very thankful for them and every step of the way, not, a, I mean, the stunt doubles are there, but we're doing a lot of the stunts ourselves because again, everything is getting covered. So you almost have to be there involved in it at every step of the way to make it work on screen. And, uh, you know, they helped me lose 10 pounds on the set. And so I was like, all right, free workout as well. I can, I'll take it. And because you were working with the same stunt team as the first movie, did you find that there was there was a slight difference in the collaboration and working with them? Because at this point, they've seen the work that you've done on set. They know what you're capable of, but also there's a different trust that you have. So almost it seems like they would have the ability to push you a little bit further and to let you do a little bit more character wise, but also in terms of what you're doing yourself instead of having a stunt double step in. Yeah, they trusted me too much. And, you know, I was like, <laughs> oh. I'm really gonna have to do this. They're like, we know you can do it, Logan. You're gonna, you're gonna step up to the plate. And I was like, ah, I hate you, but I respect you because this will go great for my stunt reel. So uh, yeah, I, I would, I guess um, I was a, a great runner, um, even though I've never felt like I was good at running in my life. But I guess I can do it on screen. So I'll fake it till I make it. And um it was yeah it was great they really did trust in me and um we had had that you know relationship before and it, it was great it, it just felt like you know at, at the end of the day i was part of their stunt crew too so they they did trust in me a lot and um yeah i guess it, it's made me more agile because of it yeah. And obviously one of the intricacies of stunt work is you're having to hit very, very spe specific beats. And at the same time, you have to make sure that every single moment and thought that comes through you is in character and that everything is leading in that sensibility. And when you first started doing stunt work and stunt sequencing in your career, did you find that there was any dance at all in just really having to figure out how to push the logistical side to the back of your brain while still making sure that you hit all the marks and that character was always coming forward? Or was it something that always felt quite natural to you yeah i mean you know that's interesting i i've i've always appreciated the technical side of like doing stunt work or anything behind the camera so i really always tried to like kind of study that throughout my career um but yeah i mean it, it's it's interesting because you take like the aspect of all those technical things 
And then you also have to layer on character development and making things feel real and stuff. And so I've always appreciated when I can do both at the same time. I almost uh, think about both things a little less when I have to deal with them on both sides. And that's almost beneficial because I'm not overthinking it. Um, I'm a very powerful overthinker. So if I have to multitask, then it's more beneficial for me. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it never like stressed me out to the f fact that I felt like I couldn't um, approach this in like a professional manner. Um, it's always happened in a very nice and natural way, but um, you know, I, these movies really take me to my limit. I've been, um, basically, I feel like tortured in every which way that somebody can on screen because of these last two films. So I'm going to have, again, also a great death reel as far as action reel too. Um, so yeah, the only thing that I've basically learned with Ben's character too is maybe he's got like the DNA of a cockroach because I guess you just can't kill him. <laughs> and you were talking about Taylor um, Russell earlier, who plays Zoe in, in the films with you. Um, and so I was very interested in the dynamic and relationship that the two of you have together, particularly when it comes to working on scenes and some of the ways in which the two of you have found a shorthand because of working together so extensively now. Yeah, you know, um, that was definitely there for the second one. It was like, you know, I think where each new character that has to come in, we almost uh, gave them a pep talk being like, this is what you guys should expect. You know, this is going to be how the shooting schedule is going to be. I mean, I know production's going to tell you this, but we're going to give you a little bit more of the gritty details. Um, so yeah, we had that callous. We knew what to expect coming in. And um, yeah, I, you know, you, you talk about dances. I It was, it was more of like a, fine-tuned dance for us where we kind of just knew the beats we knew how to play it and um having that experience beforehand made it easier for taylor and i when we were in the grunt of like those high octane intense scenes um she's a great scene partner and she really made it um all the more easy um even though it's such a rigorous task to approach on the screen yeah. So what were some of the details that you would give in, in the pep talk and in particular the, the aspects where you said that you would give the more gritty details than production would give? Yeah. Make sure that you're ready for the fact that they're going to shoot every kind of angle. Um, if they need a like finger in a certain position, they're going to need to get that, you know, um, make sure that you also know how to like, scream for three months and not lose your voice um and uh yeah just expect to be exhausted for a really long time um and hopefully all this torture won't run into your uh subconscious and your dreams and what's the difference for you in working on a project like this where there is such an intimacy between the cast because it really is just a few of you trapped in in these rooms throughout the entire film so you really get that opportunity to build such a rapport you know similar to what you did you had the opportunity to do with taylor in the first one yeah it really um makes us bond very quickly you know and um if anything it's it's like being in the trenches, you know, uh, once you've experienced it all together, there is this kindred bond that um, you'll have for the rest of your life, this tattoo or scar, if you will. And, um, you know, I, I, we really knew how to decompress. So, um, you know, there was a lot of drinks on patios and, uh, you know, some some beach moments as much as possible. And, you uh, uh, thankfully we could find a hot tub in in South Africa to chill out in and um yeah it was met with a lot of liquor that's for sure but not beach moments on the set location <laughs> not that one yeah ones that smell good ones that make you feel revitalized <laughs> yeah <laughs> And you were bringing up the, the fear aspect and, you know, what's great about these films is it's really leading into the psychological thriller aspect. It's not necessarily about trying to make the audience jump on different beats, but you're trying to really build this constant sense of suspense and tension that really elevates throughout the movie. And I was very 
curious about how that then channels into your performance and if that's something that you're thinking about as you're filming scenes and the way that you all want to be building that that heightened sense of tension throughout the film. Yeah, you know, I mean, we we're dealing with a kind of film trope that we've that we've experienced for uh, a, a long time in cinema, which is like these almost like gory element things. I mean, I, you know, I could, I, we could compare it to a, a saw type film, but we also wanted to kind of flip that genre a little bit and make it more of the psychological thriller that I hope that we've portrayed. Um, and through all of it, it's, it's, there's a mystery and there's a piece of a puzzle. And, you know, the, the, the whole great thing about escape rooms is it's a, it's a collaborative effort. It's let's, let's all put our minds together and try to figure out these situations. So, you know, I, I hope that what we were able to convey, especially with the second one is almost an interactive experience where the, the, the audience members can sit there and try to think what the next beats are going to be through every step of the way. Um, and that's really all the, that's what I was trying to convey, I think. And, um, you know, I, I, I think that that was um, ultimately accomplished and I'm uh, yeah. And that's conversations with Adam and that's, you know, collaborative conversations with the actors as well. But um yeah, we just want to make it a fun, interactive thrill ride that hopefully people will enjoy. Yeah, and you also really get such an opportunity to play around with Ben's fight or flight instinct. And there's a lot of moments where he's really able to put his own personal fear and trepidation to the back of his mind and just focus on, you know, the matter at hand. We've got to figure this out. This is what we're going to do. And he takes on, like you said, like a real leadership position within the group in this film to such a degree. And at the same time, there are moments where he is genuinely terrified and does allow that to creep over. Um, and so did you, did you play around at all with when he was going to really let the fear sink in when that was going to really sneak up on him or you know was it very much from the scripts and from a lot of those details that you were able to find it quite easily yeah no I definitely wanted to find some areas where he kind of loses his cool I think it happens a little bit halfway through um uh there's a moment with my character and Tom Cockrell's character where he does something that is uh, very dangerous and could put everybody at risk. And I am so in that high octane adrenaline of the entire situation while also trying to maintain the, 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 the coolness to try to figure something out in a mental stable area that it just, uh, he just snaps. And, you know, so I, I, I found that really fun to like, kind of go through different avenues of when it's going to be really heart wrenching when you can focus. And then also when you just realize that you, you can't do it anymore. I mean, you know, doesn't matter how many torturous escape rooms that you are in, they're still going to be hard to be a part of. Um, you're fighting for your life every step of the way. And um, no matter how much, past experience or training you have it's always going to be a rigorous hard journey so you know that human quality of just like being in over your head is just like it's I, I try to convey that kind of throughout the whole experience yeah and separately you've you've mentioned before how working on i'm in the band was a really transformational project for you not just because of the responsibility of carrying a show and everything that comes with that but also a lot of the aspects that you learned about the business of acting and so it sounds like it was it was a role that really changed a lot in terms of the things that you were able to learn both in front of and behind the camera and mm -hmm. so i was very i was interested in what those aspects were and what a lot of the learning curves were when that you went through that that are things that you now still carry through into a lot of your projects yeah um you know it was it was a lot of the the responsibility it was a lot of um the the exhaustion but also perseverance through something being able to change things at a moment's notice you know if something's not working right how to uh, kind of massage that and make uh, something that potentially works in the end. 
Um, and yeah, you know, it, it, it really was um, just sticking to uh, the, the final product being determined and um, just, uh, you know, having a decent head on your shoulders. Um, you know, sometimes this business can be so cutthroat or it's up and down and it's, it's a roller coaster ride always. And, um, you know, I was thankful that the people that I was working with on that show also taught me about that. You know, there's going to be the pros and cons to everything that we do in this industry. And, um, you know, as long as you just keep a level head and don't go into some crazy Hollywood ego trip that you can, um, you know, maintain, your sanity everybody else will feel a lot happier being around you and um yeah it, it's all about yeah collaboration and good communication and so i i learned all of those pieces while working on on that show at such a young age yeah and i also really appreciate that when you talk about acting and what it is that draws you into specific characters and and projects is very much about that intrigue and that interest in the human condition and all of the different things that you get to learn through these characters and so what do you feel it is that you got the opportunity to learn in that respect through working on the escape room series um yeah i mean i guess i i learned how to deal with a lot of like traumatic elements of emotions you know um and also like i got to see firsthand how these technical movies are like a song and a dance really. And it, it is a ballet of sorts, even though how grim and like gruesome it can be, it still is so thought out and meticulous. Um, and so, yeah, you only just respect that kind of work all the more. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's interesting because some genres don't get as much credit as others, but I feel that like at least the horror and thriller genre has really kind of stepped up to the plate in the past couple of years uh, in making new and inventive stories. Uh, we're not living in just the slasher tropes anymore. Um, there are these very thought out, uh, beautifully shot and really dynamically um mind-bending characters that are coming out and stories that are coming out and so i i'm you know proud and happy to be a part of a, a new resurgence of playing with genre-based movies and making them a little bit more enhanced than they were in maybe previous years yeah really really appreciate you taking the time today to to talk all about the movies and i feel like adam robital is always talking about 10 million ideas that he has for future projects so hopefully we'll get a handful more in the future thank you so much logan absolutely thank you for your time